Welcome everyone. Today we are going to cover Unit 5 for UGC NET English Literature. This is one of the most important unit and one can expect 4 to 10 questions in it. Or you can say, if we go by the average and then uh, somewhere around 6 to 7 or sometimes 10 or 4. So average you can say 7 questions are expected from this unit. To crack UGC net, it can play a vital role for your success. This unit is the one which is one of the easiest, but students pay less attention to it. In case of less attention, we never go with it. Or uh, if we go by the direct unit, then uh, we can say, this is our uh, project for uh, for unit five, that is the language, basic concept, theories, pedagogy, and English in use. In this, uh, we will cover basic concept. And uh, if we go by the subject, uh, then uh, we are having uh, unit one, two, three, four, five, four in different sense, and in five, we, uh, we are having this one. And uh, this uh, is uh, one of the most important book if we want to cover this particular unit, but uh, this is not the only book. You have uh, uh, to read several other books and terms and pedagogies and other things. And all these uh, in all together can make something which you need to crack entrance exam. And uh, if we go by the mistake, our mistake remains, uh, we focus too much on British literature, that is the uh, drama, poetry, fiction, and non-fiction prose. But we forget that in these four units, all the literature of the world are covered. Either it is Indian, American, Australian, Canadian, French, Australian, Russian, everything is there. However, our much emphasis remain on British literature. And this is how it becomes a blunder. And the other unit, that is uh, uh, unit four, we never pay attention. And uh, here we are going to cover some important terms and other things which are frequently asked by UGC NET. And uh, apart from this book, we will go with this uh, term that is alliteration. Alliteration is nothing but repetition of a consonant in two or more words. And uh, one of the example is he built a big boat. A pack of pick paper Peter Piper picked. In these two examples, we can say two consonants or more than two are repeated in a line. Here, big and both are there. And another example, pack of pickled peppers, Peter piped picked. In this way, uh, we are having this alliteration. The next is couplet. That is uh, perhaps the easiest one we have. And the two line, that two line of the same material length usually found in Shakespearean sonnets. And here uh, you can find two lines. True wit is nature to advance dress. What of was thought but nearer to well expressed. That is uh, Alexander Pope's poem. And uh, you can have this sonnet. And uh, these are two lines, two lines mostly called couplet, couplets. And Dixon, that is another part of uh, language. And uh, it is a selection of words in literary work. Saying, expression, or a word in its original meaning is writer or speaker's distinctive vocabulary choices and style of accept, ex expression in a poem or story is called Dixon. Certain writer in modern day and age use anarchic terms such as thy. And uh, thy and wherefore to imbue Shakespearean mood to their work. Though they, instead of uh, you, they use thy, your, and other, whereof, and so on. So these kind of things which give you the classical touch or uh, traditional outlook to the language. The next is oxymoron, and apparently a physical contrast which only makes sense on a deeper level is called oxymoron. It is a figure of speech that juxtaposes concept with opposing meaning with a word or a phrase that certain that creates an 
ostensible self contradiction you can uh, call it a soft dull keenly stupid pointly false and uh, this is uh, one of the best example you can have in poem from uh, william shakespeare's romeo and juliet play and uh, the poem uh, runs thus oh brawling love or oh loving hate here love and hate are out together oh anything of nothing first create nothing and create oh heavily lightness serious vanity so serious and vanity miss happen chaos of well seeming form chaos and forms feather of lead bright smoke cold and sick hell all again and in this way still waking sleep and that is not what it is this love feel i i feel no love in this and here again contradiction so this uh, type of thing you can say positive or negative in the same line same way is called oxymoron the next uh, in the line is the poetic food sometime is also called food a poetic food is a unit of stressed and unstressed label in a line of poetry poetic feet are based on number of syllable in each foot two or two of the most common feet in english poetry are i am and trochi both are made up of two syllable in case of lines there are followed like a line can have one feet that is called monometer if it is have two feet diameter three feet trimeter four feet tetrameter five feet pentameter penta means 5 6 feet hexameter hexameter hexa means 6 7 feet heptameter 8 feet octameter it is like octagon having eight shapes and something and uh, this way we are having poetic foot and uh, the type of their length uh, it is monometer diameter trimeter pentameter pentameter hexa hepta and octameter and uh, these are having 1 to 8 feet in all together and several poets have used such kind of uh, lines in their poetry in case of we go with the poetic meter poetic meter refers to the number of feet used in each line the most common poetic feet in english poetry is iambic pentameter which uses 5 iambs per line and uh, as we have a uh, Five that is uh, pentameter, and uh, here it is pentameter. One of the main places you will see it is in the sonnet. So most important point of uh, sonnet is related to iambic pentameter. Sonnet consists of fourteen lines following a very specific rhyme scheme. Much of William Shakespeare's work is written in iambic pentameter. A good example is the beginning of the famous balcony scene in Romeo and Juliet. but so what light through yonder window breaks is it the east and juliet is the sun and now you can see each time how the line is mentioned light yonder window break east juliet sun and how the stress or the five arms are there soft light yonder half wind though half breaks it is east juliet is sun in if we go with the rhyme then the rhyme a major aspect of sound in more formal verse is rhyme poetry with a set rhyme scheme is less common now than it once was but it is still used and can still be powerful the term rhyme scheme simply refers to the repetition of a rhyme throughout a poem the rhyme scheme is typically sewn with letter representing the patterns that rhyme makes throughout the poem here you can have its example some candle clear burn somewhere i come by i must i muse at how it's being puts bliss full back with yellowy moisture mild ma nights blear all black or too fro yonder tender trembling truckle at the eye it is grand girard manley hopkins poem the candle indoor and the rhyme scheme is a b b a and here in the first line we can say by so we will put a here and uh, in the line uh, next to a line that is back so it is b and uh, black and back are uh, 
having the same sound so it is again b and i and by are having same sound and uh, that is how we can uh, use the a b b a yugma and here it is a literary term for using one word to modify two other words in two different way its example is she broke his car he broke his car and his heart oh sorry she broke his heart and his car when you see one word to link two thoughts it is called yugma he opened his mind and his wallet every time he went out with her so it is mind and wallet both are two different ways or different words yet time and her aunt moved slowly and her patience and her ideas were nearly worn hour before the tea day was over it is uh, pride and prejudice by jane austen the tug and tore at each other's hair and clothes punch and scratch each other nose and covered themselves with dust and glory so dust and glory are two different things and it is from adventure of tom sire by mark twain he was alter alternately cudding and his brain and his turkey it is oliver twist by charles dickens and onomatopoeia is a process of creating words that phonetically imitate resembles or suggests the sound that it describes for example if we are going with the cloak then uh, cloak is uh, producing sound tick tock tick tock and uh, once we write it in uh, a text then uh, it is having onomatopoeia and uh, gun suit is like thai thai and uh, here uh, we can uh, have it uh, sound like gun thai thai and it is uh, onomatopoeia voices in rhetoric Moises is a euphemistic figure of speech that intentionally understates something or implies that it is lesser in significance or size than it really is. It is opposite of rhexis and sometimes used as a synonym for litter. For example, the pond for the Atl Atlantic Ocean across the pond. You can say across the ocean or so on. And the other way, epidactic is characterized or designed to display rhetoric or oratorical skills hyperbole is an overstatement or exaggeration like uh, c is blind as that and uh, you exaggerate something at a higher level is called hyperbole trochi it is a metrical food which consists a long syllable or stressed syllable followed by a short or unstress even and that is the trochi we are having that is also another part of uh, linguist anapestic is a metrical food which consists of two short syllables followed by a long one in accentual stress meters consist of two unstressed syllables followed by one stress syllable metaphor metaphor is an implicit comparison between two different things and here you can uh, have example a tattered coat upon tattered sick that is uh, example of metaphor and uh, this uh, is one of uh, most easy uh, metaphor and uh, several time question is asked from it and uh, thus uh, and uh, now we are having meter and stress the reoccurrence of similar pattern in some lines of poem is called meter and the determined feature of syllabic verse is neither stress nor quantity but the number of syllable in a line the successive syllable with approximately equal light stresses constitute a ferric and octave the first part of italian sonnet is called octave and uh, this uh, is uh, what we have uh, for this and uh, these uh, either any point uh, either it is uh, alliteration couplet diction oxymoron poetic foot or poetic meter several times these question are asked and uh, most of time student either do not touch them or just left them or uh, in that sense rhyme yagma onomatopoeia moises hyperbole trochi anapestic metaphor meter stress and octave these are some of uh, the important points that we have and several times we do not pay attention that is why we 
get less score in our marking and hence uh, if uh, we are willing to score more we have to focus more on unit 5 and uh, it would improve our score some 10 marks to 20 marks if maximum we go and if we go by the average then at least 14 question is that we can expect and the 14 question means 28 marks sorry seven question means 14 marks so 14 marks uh, is uh, Huge and uh, it can uh, help you to crack JRF if you are in category of UGC net. Now it is uh, depend upon the student how they work upon this particular unit. Instead of going uh, with the too much emphasis on the literature, we can focus on the later six unit. These six unit will cover at least sixty question because uh, we can expect that from each unit ten question will be there. So last six unit are uh, just. Uh, 60 question and upper four are uh, 40 question and upper four unit means uh, that is the hardest task we are having uh, and uh, in it we have to cover several literatures of different different countries so the better would be to go with the later six unit uh, if we are willing to go for JRF and so on and uh, this is what we have if you like the video do subscribe to channel like and share and comment with this thank you take care good day best